Okay, so it looks like we are now live. Is that right? Yes, we're ready to go. Okay, thanks, Kay. So the public hearing on Ordinance 8846 is now open. Uh, a public hearing is a meeting that provides the opportunity for public discussion regarding ordinances and other matters pending before City Council. Interested parties may express their views and submit evidence supporting those views at this public hearing. The information shared will become part of the city's permanent record and may be used by the members of city council in deciding whether or not to adopt the ordinance. Before this committee today is ordinance 8846, which establishes interim zoning for approximately 40.586 acres of land at the southwest corner of Carter Road and East Poe Road. This property was recently annexed to the city and the city has petitioned that the property be given an interim zoning classification of M3 Business Park. Uh, the property will become a part of the Woodbridge Business Park. I should mention that there is an error in the zoning classification requested in the ordinance presented to council. That error will be corrected during council's meeting of the whole this evening. So there are four parts to a public hearing, uh, the staff report, the applicant's testimony, public testimony, and then discussion by members of council. Uh, so to begin, we will now receive the staff report from Heather Saylor, our planning director. Good evening. Can you hear me? I can. Great. Uh, subject of this public hearing is interim zoning to set that as M3 Business Park for the recently annexed property. The owner and petitioner of the property is the city of Bowling Green. The location is the southwest corner of Carter Road and East Poe Road which is approximately 40.586 acres. There is a map attached to a handout that I emailed you earlier that shows the location. Uh, Planning Commission did hold a public hearing on Wednesday, April 1st of this year, and they referred the request to City Council with a recommendation of the M3 Business Park zoning. Um, currently in Center Township, it is zoned industrial. So by ordinance, I do have to recommend that similar zoning. I also attached a copy of the M3 business park so you're able to read the permitted uses and the conditional uses. I also attached a copy of the setback requirements, maximum height, uh, maximum lot coverage, and also again, there's a map attached. We did receive a letter back when Planning Commission did review this from Leslie Riker, which was already read to the, into the record. Uh, Planning Commission did share their concerns and I hope City Council had really looked at some of the issues of VTEC, a current tenant of the business park. Um, staff internally has talked about some future buffering requirements that we think will work well as we expand Woodbridge to the east. Um, other than the staff comment, that's pretty much it. I know Kay has some letters she would like to read into the record that she received. Are there any questions? Thanks, Heather. Greg, John, questions? Uh, yes, Heather, before you uh, leave. So our um, the task tonight is to um, define the zoning if if we are um, applying the M3 zoning. That Correct. is yes, the property's yeah. already been annexed, so yes, it does need zoning. So of course that you know seems uh, uh, necessary, but there have been a lot of concerns raised by the neighbors. Um, do we have any feeling that those can or will be addressed as this goes forward? Yes. Well, I would like to defer to Sue Clark if she's here. I know she's worked with VTech for several years on trying to improve the property. Uh, most recently, we feel there's a lot of progress been made. But of course, looking into the future, we hope to have a better job, a better handle on that with the expansion of Woodbridge. Great. Thank you. Okay. Greg, anything? No, no questions right now. Thanks. Okay. So as Heather mentioned, this ordinance was initiated, initiated excuse me, by the administration. Uh, so there are no applicants to provide testimony. Uh, so that means we will now hear testimony from the public. Any member of the public who wanted to address the members of this committee uh, were encouraged to email or call in. Did we receive any correspondence or do we have anyone on the line, Kay? It appears as though there's one person waiting. Okay. Did we receive any correspondence? I have a, a couple pieces of correspondence, but I thought I'd see if this person was one of those first. Okay, awesome. Go ahead. Do I have to do anything? 
Um, please state your name and address for the record, and please go ahead and speak regarding the uh, uh -huh. rezoning public hearing. Uh, this is Sue Clark, um, 130 South Main Street. Um, I just wanted to add that I've spoken to Dick Carpenter this afternoon and that um, he understands what we are trying to do with the purchase agreement requiring them to screen on this property. Um, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Okay, thanks, Sue. Can you just stay on the line for a little bit? I think what we'll have Kay do is read any correspondence that we receive from the public, and then we will definitely circle back to you. Okay, okay. I'm on the line. Thanks. This was, re this was received after the Planning Commission from John and Carol Riker, 9870 East Poe Road. Our property is at the northeast corner of Poe and Carter Roads. The following comments are concerning the annexation of the property located at the southwest corner of East Poe Road and Carter Road to the Bowling Green Business Park. Number one, limits for all exterior storage of trash or manufactured items be concealed from public view, either by complete privacy fencing or totally prohibited, preventing the junkyard effect. Exterior lighting to be limited to the areas of entrance and ex exits to the building, possibly Possibility of using light hoods to direct light down rather than out. Entrances and exits to the property by service trucks and employee parking be limited to those new or existing streets that will eliminate excess traffic noise. Number four, use of similar colored exterior siding that would complement those existing buildings. And number five, required areas of attractive area uh, landscaping thank you for the opportunity to sh share our concerns and ps the size of drainage control ponds to be deep enough to prevent mosquito infestation in shallow water and um then i also received an email from gail baden and i don't see their address it says hello i sent you an email about our concerns but you did not get it. I also tried to listen to your meeting, but we could not understand it at all. And I'm assuming she's referring to the planning commission meeting. But this is what I sent to you. Some points we wanted to point out. Traffic and noise will increase. I, alre al I already, a guardrail put down my throat that to the increased traffic on Poe. Lighting, we understand to a point, security lighting should not be a distraction to driver and to us living here. Will there be any buffer like grass strip trees planted? Also like bomb threats been there and angry worked, they're threatened to leave livestock out, we have livestock. What is going to, be what is going to do to my house value and I like living on a farm not a city so in other words do not put this in my neighborhood if you would not put it in yours and that is from Gail Baden and then the last one I have is from Richard and Judy Carpenter and it says to the council members in addition to Leslie Riker's comments concerning the approximately 40 point 856 acres of land on East Poe and Carter Roads we would like council to consider provisions for green space on the north and on the south sides of the property to protect the homeowners in the area. Thank you for your consideration. Their address is 15711 Carter Road in Bowling Green. And that's all I have. Okay, thanks, Kate. Who, the first letter you read into the record, who, who was that from? John and Carol Riker. John and Carol Riker. Okay. On Poe Road. Um, thank you. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll try and summarize a little bit, you know, these letters raised various issues, um, including the, it, it seems to speak of the VTech factory, um, near the property at issue, specifically those outdoor storage racks. Um, you know, I, I heard a call to plan, um, maybe new buildings away from ditch banks. Uh, issues of traffic, lighting, screening along Poe Road, uh, green space on the north and south sides of the property, 
were also raised, um, you know, among other items. Um, so we have we have Katie Thompson and Sue Clark from Economic Development with us. If Sue is still on the line, um, so I'm hoping that the two of you can talk to us. I guess a little bit about the situation with VTech and maybe what lessons, if any, we have learned. Uh, and then I'd also um, I, I'd also like to hear about uh, our vision for the new 40 acre parcel uh, at Woodbridge Business Park. Okay, I would be happy to address those issues. Um, VTech is not buying this property, so hopefully we will not have a repeat of the property that they currently own. Um, but this 40 acres, the owner has been after us for at least three years to purchase it. And the U Board of Public Utilities and the um, Economic Development Office finally decided that um, this was an excellent move to keep expanding the business park um, to the east. We already have under contract um, about 60 acres of Mr. Carpenter's land that will eventually have a road down uh, built down through it down into east onto East Worcester Street. So um, I would think that at some point we would build a road and we would extend Woodstream, which is the road that currently runs in front of Ohio Logistics Building into the new um, expansion of the 40 acres that we per that was purchased two years ago. Um, we understand the concern of screening and um, we are working um, and looking at a variety of options to put into any purchase agreement that would create um, screening um, in the form of mounding and trees to the north and to the south um, uh, of that property. Um, I don't anticipate that this property will be sold within the next two to three years because it doesn't have any utilities. We have no money to extend the utilities or the road, but it is allowing us to think into the future and to plan into the future. As far as the lighting goes, um, that would be up to zoning to require the zoning. Um, the Economic Development Office can only um, require them to do the buffing and uh, um, we can encourage them to do things. The covenants that are currently on Woodbridge have no teeth in them. I have no way of enforcing that. Um, the fire chief has been the most effective enforcing them to keep the path open. They have assured the city on multiple occasions that they are working to um, alleviate some of that uh, racking, but it is part of their operation. The racking is owned by their customers and they can only get rid of them once they get rid of their customer. So we don't really want them to get rid of all their customers because we need them to keep operating. Um, they employ over 900 employees and they are a major electrical user. So they are a very important part of our community and in especially our industrial community to both the, um, the general fund and to Brian's operation in the utility department. So um, while I appreciate all the concerns and the suggestions, we would be happy to take those into account and um, when we have a potential client who is looking at purchasing some of that land, talk to them about some of the suggestions that have been made. Um, uh, I am not aware that, I, I can't think of any um, ponds that are in there except the one in front of Centaur Tool and Die and the one in front of um, Nichols, 
and both of those seem to be well maintained ponds by their current employee or uh, the current owners. Um, I'm not aware that there are mosquito issues out there. None of the other plants have. Well, I guess uh, GKN has a pond, and it seems to be well maintained also. There are other questions. Um, I would be happy to try and answer them. Okay, thank you, Sue. Katie, did you have anything you wanted to add? Did no, you, I think did she you guys miss that? I'm it. sorry. I mean, just to recap. <laughs> Um, no, I, I think Sue addressed most of the concerns and we certainly hear them and are, are definitely taking them into account as we plan for the future. Okay. Um, Heather, are you still around? Did you want to add anything? No, I have nothing to add unless you have questions. Okay. Greg, John, any questions? Uh, no, no questions at this time for me. Uh, not from me uh, either, uh, Rachel. Okay, so um, the members of council will now discuss the ordinance. Greg, John, you want to get us started? Well, I'll go ahead and jump in. I, I think in general, this seems to make sense uh, on a lot of fronts. Uh, I'm inclined to support it. It looks like um, uh, the, the economic development that Sue and Katie are taking a look at uh, the steps necessary to to prep the lot to, to address the the neighbors' concerns. Um, you know, obviously, if if buffering is an issue, uh, that you know that's something that, that the council would have to address in terms of future modifications to our zoning uh, code. But uh, the way it stands right now, and the fact that there's no current buyer, uh, I'm I'm inclined to support this. I don't have any any challenges with it. Uh, thank you, Greg. It, it sounds, um, you know, Sue, I believe you said uh, there would be nothing even developed for about, say, two or three years. Does that sound um, correct? That, yeah, that is, that is correct, John. Um, we only purchased the property, as you remember, in December. Um, we have no utilities to it. Um, Carter Road is still in the township. So we um, would need to work with um, Plain Township to widen that road probably. It, while it's an excellent township road, um, you know, I don't know that it could take a lot of traffic. It is a major concern of mine and has been for the last two to three years that we only have one ingress and egress out of that park. And I think that is extremely dangerous and um, we need to think seriously about how we're going to get people in and out of there. We have a lot of people working out there and a lot of truck traffic and um, have only one exit. If you recall when we had the wind shear um, and took down all those, all those electric lines along Dunbridge Road a couple of years ago, we had to go to VTEC and request them to allow people to come in and out of the park that way while the electric division put the poles back up. So this is a serious issue that we need to be considering is how are we gonna get people in and out of there safely if Dunbridge Road is blocked off? So, you know, it would, it's, sure. it's cheaper to build a road from Wood Street harder than it is to build one from Wood Street all the way down to East Worcester Street. So that, you know, that's, plays a part in this, but um, I don't see that happening, especially now um, that um, our budgets are limited and we're looking at ways to save money and cut, cut budgets. You know, I don't see that happening until at least two to three years. Oh, great. Thank you, Sue. Anything else, John? Uh, I, you know, I, I'm comforted. I, I think some really important issues have been raised. Uh, by the neighbors, and I'm comforted by the uh, the time we'll have to uh, consider the type of um, uh, conditions they'd like to see. And with our uh, about to redo our zoning code, I think this is important information uh, at this time. 
So again, I'm comforted by the delay that uh, we're looking at. Okay. It, um, so we are running over our allotted time. Um, I'll just add that, you know, this, um, I'm inclined to support this. I mean, the issue at hand is assigning a zoning classification to this property. And it certainly makes sense um, to me to zone this M3 business park um, because of its location in Woodbridge business park, um, which is all zoned M3. Um, I think we'll wrap things up if there's um, nothing else anyone has to add. Thank you to everyone that participated. And this concludes the public hearing on ordinance 8846. Please rise and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thank you to everyone that's joining us live and remotely this evening. Kay, could you call the roll? Harold? Here. Hollenbaugh? Here. Leontis? Here. Phipps? Phipps? Here. Robinette? Here. Roland? Here. Zamverdino? Here. Okay. The minutes from our meeting on May 4th were distributed prior to this meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? All right, seeing none, I have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Okay, properly moved and seconded. All in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The minutes are approved. Correspondence. Kay, do we have correspondence this evening? Yes. Um, received from Finance Director Brian Bouchong is a listing of some additional transfers that are needed for the month of May, and those require your approval. 
Do I have a motion to approve the budget transfer? So moved. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. And then um, I also have a rather lengthy list here of um, board and commission appointments and reappointments that I will read. Um, new, these are the following are new appointments. And these were distributed to you via email. And I also placed a copy in front of you at your place. So new appointments, the audit committee is Mark Hollenbaugh for a four-year term ending 531-24. And also Mark Kaysen for a four-year term ending 531-24. Bicycle Safety Commission, Sam Alt for a one-year term ending 531-21. And Income Tax Board of Review, this is a city council appointment. Randy Roberts for a two-year appointment, ending 531-22. Historic Preservation, Wilfred Radebush, two-year term, ending 531-22. Human Relations, Amy Jeffers for a three-year term, ending 531-23. And Amy Dunapace for a three-year term, ending 531-23 and Carol Bell, three-year term, ending 531-23. Job Creation and Retention Board, is uh, appointment is Greg Robinette as an ex-officio uh, representative. Parks and Recreation, Cal Bowers for a five-year term, ending 531-25. Also to Parks and Recreation, Brian Hartzler, five years, ending 531-25. Tree Commission, Chris Meyer, three-year term, ending 531-23. And then these are reappointments. Bicycle Safety Commission, Kirby Bucks, one-year term, ending 531-21. Stephen Langendurf Langendurfer and Tyson Richmond for three-year terms, ending 531-23. Bowling Green Housing Agency, Alicia Nenovich for a four-year term, ending to 531-24. Civil Service Commission, John Fawcett for a six-year term, ending 531-26. Human Relations, Ellie Boyle for a one-year term, for ending 531-21. And Morgan Hollinsworth for a three-year term, ending 531-23. Planning Commission, Chris Phillips for a six-year term, ending 531-26. Public Utilities, Megan Newlove, five-year term ending 531-25. Records Commission, Brian Bouchong for three-year term ending 531-23. Revolving Loan Fund, and all of these are for three-year terms ending 531-23. Greg Bakies, Sue Clark, John Eckel, Wendy Headley, and Amanda Cress. For the Traffic Commission, Don McKehey, and Kent Strange for four-year terms, ending 531-24. Tree Commission, George Clemens and Kent Reichert for three-year terms, ending 531-23. Transportation Advisory is Shannon Fisher, Jason Miller, Christy Walton for three-year terms, ending 531-23. Zoning Board of Appeals, Chris Ostrowski for a four-year term, ending 531-24. And those require um, your uh, confirmation. Okay, Mr. President. Mr. Harold. I move that uh, we approve this excellent list of uh, citizens that have stepped up to serve their city. Second. Okay, properly moved and seconded. All in favor of approving the appointments to committees say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Outstanding. Uh, let's see, lobby visitations. No lobby visitations. No lobby visitations. Brings us to the introduction of new legislation. Mr. President. Mr. Robinette. From the uh, Finance Committee, I have an ordinance providing supplemental appropriations for the current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio during the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2020 and ending December 31st, 2020. Mr. President. Mr. Harold. From uh, Council of Committee as a whole, I have a resolution in support of the 
uh, hashtag moving forward BG campaign in its efforts to provide guidance and promote public safety as local commerce resumes. All right. Thank you very much. Official reports, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Hope everybody is well. Just have a couple of very brief uh, topics. Um, as you're all, I'm, I'm sure aware, um, last week the governor issued guidance on the reopening of a number of sections of our economy. Uh, specifically, we received guidance on pools, gyms, and day camps. Um, these are things that are obviously important to the community. So we wanted to be um, we want to be very deliberate in our review of the of the guidance and the rules that are being uh, implemented by the by the state. So today, um, Lori, Joe, and I met with Kristen to discuss um, the, uh, the, the the requirements. Staff is continuing to review all of those, and I would expect that in the next several days or a couple of days, um, I would make a decision on the status of those facilities, um, and we'll be announcing those publicly. And I will we will certainly keep you uh, in the loop as decisions are made on those very important items. Um, we had a very good staff meeting today, and among uh, a, a number of things that we discussed was things that the city is doing um, in conjunction with various partners uh, in, in the downtown business sector. Um, we're eager to engage with um, various businesses down there, do everything that we can do to support commerce um, in the downtown area. Um, during the discussion, um, I had remarked uh, and actually discussed with the Chief Hetrick that it seemed to me over the past week or so that there is quite a bit more traffic around town and specifically in the downtown area. And I was just, I guess, curious to what his uh, observation was. And he would say that he observed the same thing. So it does appear that there is an increase in traffic downtown, um, perhaps that we're getting to the point what we would expect in a typical Bowling Green summer. So. This is encouraging news. We're hoping that some of uh, this traffic would equate into an increase in business and in down in, in our downtown businesses. Um, as more and more uh, businesses do open up and people venture out of their homes, um, I just want to urge everybody to continue to be mindful of CDC guidance um, and make sure that as we reopen, we're reopening safely. So let's be careful. Let's be cautious. Um, but let's also do everything that we can do to support Bowling Green businesses. That concludes my report, subject to any questions that you may have. Are there any questions for Mayor Osbacher? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Municipal Administrator, Ms. Treader. Good evening. Um, in consideration of health regulations that people be spaced out when dining and in an effort to provide support to our downtown businesses, Mayor Osbacher has requested that we relook at the plans and provisions for a designated outdoor refreshment area. We are engaging with Downtown Bowling Green, and that organization has reached out and received adequate commitments from establishments downtown who hold liquor licenses to go ahead with the next step, which is submission of an application to Bowling Green City Council. The application is being worked on with downtown Bowling Green and the mayor's office. Once that application is submitted to you, it will be necessary for Kay to publish a notice in the, the paper once a week for two consecutive weeks. That notice is to alert the public that the application has been submitted and is available for public review and to announce a time and date for a public hearing. Because of the notice requirement and not having the application as of yet, we don't have a date for you. However, as soon as it is received, uh, we will reach, Kay will reach out to you, set the date for the public hearing, and then she will be able to begin that advertising on your behalf. A note that in the law, and if you care to review it, it is ORC 4301.82, and we're glad to send you that link um, or the section or make you copies of that if you'd like to review just so you understand how it works. It states that the legislative authority shall approve or disapprove the application 
not earlier than 30 days, but not later than 60 days after the initial publication of the notice. So for example, if K advertises on May 24th, you know, it's, you can't act before 30 days, but you can't wait longer than 60 days. Um, so any questions on that? Not that we are experts, but we're kind of navigating our way through. What did you say the ORC citation was again? Um, 4301.82. Thanks. It's so, a pretty detailed law, so it really walks us through the process. It really gives a step-by-step. -step. So, Lori, I imagine somewhere during that 30 days, the public hearing would fall, or do we have to give 30 days notice for the public hearing? You have to give that two consecutive weeks notices in the paper. So you have to advertise once per week for two consecutive weeks so that the date is out there. But we right. have to have the application on file first because part of that notice is saying we received this application and here it is for public review so people have time to look it over. Right. Well, it sounds like under those guidelines, whenever we finish the two-week process, we'd have one meeting to talk about it and, and vote if we wanted to, and we'd be able to defer the vote to the next meeting if we wanted to because it'd still be within the 60-day window. I, yes, We'd have a little bit so. of play, but not a lot. Am I correct? In... Yes, okay. that would be how I'd interpret it as well. So tonight we are trying something a bit different in that, as you can see on the screen, uh, some of the people who typically give you a report um, are on our Zoom call. So we have Kristen and Brian Kraft and Brian O'Connell. They do not actually have reports for you this evening, but they are available should you have questions. Heather. Sailor and uh, Mike Marsh, of course, are here, so you can ask them in your usual course, uh, if you care to do so, Mr. President, if they have reports. Um, I believe at least one of them does. I'll let you guess which one. And otherwise, though, please uh, direct any questions at that time to those folks, but you don't need to ask them each if they have a report because they'll just tell you no report. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Treader? My vote is that Mike has the report. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Right, President, thank you very much. Mr. President, I do right. have one oh, question. Okay. Sure. If I could. Have you decided what area the DORA area would be yet? That's going to be part of the application process okay. is making that recommendation to council. Okay. And again, we are working cooperatively with downtown Bowling Green, who uh, we have a meeting later this week with them to go okay. over the application details. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Treader? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that the planning director has a report this evening. You are correct, although very short. I just want to let you know that planning commission is going to hold a public hearing regarding the proposed gateway district on June 6th, their regularly scheduled meeting. Um, we thought that was really critical to kind of get back to some normalcy with that, and it will likely be held just like the public hearing was tonight. So we likely will have some planning commission members here, but we also have the ability for the public to call in and also our members to use Zoom. And so they can still watch live like we are tonight on YouTube. Um, secondary to that is the census. I know it probably doesn't seem that exciting right now, but it's really, really critical that we all push the census and responding to that. It's a very easy system. Um, currently we're at 63.1% response rate. Um, Wood County is at 67.1% and the state of Ohio is at 64.8%. So we do have a ways to go on that. I do believe the remuneration where they go door to door will start in June unless they end up postponing that door to door. So um, again, really critical to spread that. Um, and then lastly, of course, if you have any questions about the outdoor dining that we're trying to be flexible with, please have people contact our office. It's really critical. We know it can be very confusing. So we're just here to really help as much as we can whether it's draw sketches for people, work with them. We really want to do what we can to really help make businesses successful. So that is it, unless you have any specific questions for me. All right. Are there any questions for Heather? Question for Oh, uh, yes, I have one, Heather. Are you receiving sketches then from downtown businesses? We have, yes. Yes. We probably received about a half a dozen phone calls and then about three sketches. So and we think it's good, though. We're getting the questions. Sure. And the... Um, the three that have applied, how long a process will that be? Uh, I mean, how quickly could that happen for them? Well, there actually is no application for if it's on private property. So basically we're just asking they turn in a sketch so we have it on file. 
and we can drive by and see if there's any safety concerns. So, so far there's been no concerns as far as the sketches go and when we drive by. Excellent. Has anybody applied to use any of the city lots? No. No. All right. I had a question also for Heather. Go ahead. So one one uh, issue, uh, it, when people are dining, they obviously can't wear a mask. So uh, what they've been doing in, uh, uh, in other countries is they've been providing plastic bags so people can store their masks safely and not just put it on a table because ta masks can also be a source of contagion. Has there been any discussion about that? There's been no discussion to my knowledge. That would probably be up to the business yeah. owner, I would think, and, health, and not the city, and the, the health, health department, department too. Yes. Oversight I don't of the think restaurants, it's the county health individual. Department. Okay, well, that's a good point, um, but I think we need to take that up with someone other than Heather. Uh, any other questions for Heather? All right, thank you very much. Okay, so I see that we do have the Parks and Recreation Director available should someone have questions. Any questions? Okay. City Attorney, Mr. Marsh. Any questions for Mr. Marsh? A report? <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, all right. uh, we also have the <laughs> utilities director available this evening. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. O'Connell? No? I, I have a question. Yes. Could we get an update on the outage that occurred and whether that situation has been rectified? Okay. Just a second. Let's get him on here. Can you hear me? Brian, can you hear us? He needs to unmute. <laughs> yeah, I'm All right. Can you hear me? All yeah. right. Yep. Yep. We got you. We have a question from uh, Councilman Leontis about the power outage. I, I heard that. Uh, so the power outage that occurred uh, last week was due to the uh, transmission system that we, we received from Toledo Edison or First, mm -hmm. or First Energy. Uh, that comes in from the west side of town. Uh, they lost the, the 69 kV feed to Bowling Green uh, out past our water plant someplace. And that took out that feed. So we were down to one, one feed coming in from the east side of town. The third feed that come, comes in from the north side of town typically has been taken out because of the substation improvements that uh, First Energy is doing at their uh, Bremen Bishop substation. So we were down to one, one feed um, at that point. Um, so we had uh, put everybody on the city back into that one feed from the east side to get everybody restored into power. We moved some things around in the city, opened the breakers or closed, closed the breakers and put everybody back in. Uh, for about two days, uh, First Energy was reviewing uh, their their status, their situation to try to find the source of the problem. Uh, thankfully, by about the second day, so about Wednesday, uh, they were able to locate the the, uh, the fault and make that repair, and then reestablish that second feed. Uh, so that has been put put back into place, and uh, we've been back into our regular configuration uh, since that repair was made. Uh, around about Wednesday or Thursday, we went back into, into normal operations. So uh, our guys responded pretty well. They, they got our customers back up and running in, in uh, short order. Uh, when we restored our system, the village of Haskins also, their power was restored because they were feeding uh, through us up to Haskins and our water plant also got put back into power uh, when we restored power to our customers. Uh, the water plant has a backup generator, so that ran during that time of the outage, and uh, they, they did not have any issues with, uh, with power at the water plant. But so as far as uh, we're at right now, everything is back to normal and we're in our regular configuration. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions for Brian? I do wanna thank Brian again for the, his um, 
departments, very efficient and prompt service. Uh, there certainly were a lot of phrases on Facebook for you that day. A lot of people wanted those lights back on for Mother's Day meals and, and you performed <laughs> for them and they got their meals. Yeah, that was, that was not, not the best time to have that occur, but again, it wasn't our, our situation. So sorry to all the mothers out there, but hopefully their day wasn't too, too bad that day. You yeah. got it up and running faster now. Yeah, well, good job. my guys did. I, I didn't have much to do with it. My guys hmm. did, did all the hard work. So, Brian, let me ask you a real quick question. I happened to be driving down uh, north on Main Street when that occurred, and I sort of watched the, the traffic lights go off. Except at the four corners, it never did. Is that a, is there a backup generator? This is just I'm just curious. Did I got a separate generator system? Because I watched all the stoplights go out except for that one. Yeah, usually the, a lot of the a lot of the signals have been put on a battery backup, and so if the power does go out, the most of the signals are on a, a battery backup system. So um, I don't know if the ones downtown have been retrofitted or not. Brian Kraft might have. Uh, I was just, I was just curious. I just that. happened to, it was coincidental. I just happened to be, be there when this occurred. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Public works directors. Anyone have any questions for Brian Kraft? Okay. All right. That being the case, council committee reports. Does anyone have a report? Mr. President. Mr. Robinette. Uh, on behalf of the, the Finance Committee does have a meeting scheduled for June 1st at, at 6 p.m. And I do intend to uh, push forward with that. Uh, and it is my goal to publish an agenda prior to the meeting uh, at some point, uh, at least a day or two prior. So uh, I'll get that out, I'll work with uh, Lori. But um, my plan is to go ahead with that meeting yeah, and, and publish. It's at 6 p.m. On the, on, the, on the 1st before a regularly scheduled council meeting. But I will, I am committed to getting an agenda out to everybody before the meeting occurs. All right, outstanding. Uh, any other council committee reports? Rachel, do you have a council committee report? <laughs> Can't hear you. Can't hear you. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Um, I thought that everyone was in attendance and you didn't need a, um, a committee report from me. Uh, but we we met at 645 this evening um, on Ordinance 8846, um, which is the ordinance establishing interim zoning for approximately 40 acres of land at the southwest corner of Cor Carter and East Poe Road. Um, we had three letters uh, from the public that uh, Kay was kind enough to read. And we heard a report from Heather Saylor, as well as um, Sue Clark and Katie Thompson from Economic Development participated. Okay. Mr. President. Okay. Mr. Harold. I uh, just wanted to commend Rachel on the way that she uh, chaired the meeting. It was very organized, uh, dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's, and uh, it's a, a good example of, of how to have one of those types of public hearings. So good job, especially in this kind of a, a situation. Thank you. I agree. I, I learned from that that I never uh, want to not be sitting right here during a meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that concludes council committee reports, brings us to the reading of legislation. Kay? Okay. Legislation for first reading, resolution number 3765 for first reading, resolution in support of the hashtag moving forward BG campaign in its efforts to provide guidance and promote public safety as local commerce resumes. Mr. President. Mr. Harold. I move that we suspend the rules and give resolution 3765 its second and third reading. Second. second. Okay, properly moved and seconded. Okay, could you call the roll? Hollenbaugh? Yes. Leontis? Yes. Phipps? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Harold? Yes.
Okay, so the rules are suspended to give resolution 3765 its second and third readings. Resolution number 3765 for second and third reading. Resolution in support of the hashtag moving forward BG campaign in its efforts to provide guidance and promote public safety as local commerce resumes. Mr. President. Mr. Harold. I move that we adopt resolution 3765. Second. And it's been properly moved and seconded. Would anyone like to have discussion on resolution 3765? Yes, President. Mr. President. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead, Bill. Um, it's, uh, it's short, and I would like to uh, take the time to read it and also take the time to thank Mark for his uh, crafting of it. Um, uh, Section one, that all of our citizens are encouraged to support Bowling Green economic development and this hashtag moving forward BG campaign as we reopen our city and support our local businesses, employers, and service providers. Section two, that the ability to open and keep open businesses and promote local commerce is directly dependent on the actions of every individual to act in a way that controls the transmission of the COVID-19 virus and the prevention of future outbreaks. Section three, that all of our citizens are strongly encouraged to observe all CDC guidelines while interacting in public places, including wearing masks when social distancing cannot be guaranteed, to safeguard public health and protect the health of workers providing services. And section four, this resolution shall take effect at the earliest time permitted by law. Uh, Mr. President, I think your um, attempt to uh, balance the, the need for public safety and uh, economic well-being is, is present in this. And uh, I'm encouraged that we as a Bowling Green com uh, community uh, have people that are genuinely hoping uh, to uh, um, do, do the proper thing and uh, support our local businesses while also protecting each other by adhering to the guidelines. So I think this is important and I appreciate the work you put into it. All right, thank you, Bill. Anyone else? Mr. President, I'd Ms. like to also add my support for this resolution. I think it's very much needed and it's written in a fashion that puts the emphasis on where it belongs and saying that it's everyone's duty to go about our businesses um, in a way that uh, controls the spread of COVID-19. In other words, follow the CDC guidelines by wearing a mask and when you're with someone within six feet and maintain the six feet social distancing at all times. The, the, the task is not up to the city of Bowling Green to do this. The task is not up to every business owner to do it. They can't do two things and three things at once, keep their business open, wait on people, and manage people who come in their business. So it's up to the individual consumer. And today we heard from our governor, and we know it's going to be very, very well regulated. And um, he's willing to do some rather stringent things to make sure the CDC guidelines are met. Um, so I think this is presented in good faith, and we just want to remind people that we're living in a new reality where everyone has to take their own responsibility in keeping us safe from COVID-19. Okay. Mr. President? Mr. Zanfordino. I also would like to thank you for taking the initiative to um, get this started. And Bill, I appreciate your reading it. I, it is short and uh, I think it's great that the the, the, uh, the the actual content was read out this evening. Um, you know, I, I, I think the, the message is, is succinct but important. Um, you know, we are trying to reopen Bowling Green, and um, we've done a great job. We have almost no incidents in town, uh, so we should all be very proud of that, um, including the citizens that uh, made that possible. Um, uh, my only... Um, a uh, concern is that as things loosen up, perhaps uh, masks will uh, also loosen up. Uh, and um, I'd just like to second uh, Sandy's comments that um, how well this will go locally 
is depending on is dependent on the actions of uh, each individual. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Leontis. Yes, and I would like to also join others in thanking you and your leadership in putting this together. And I'd, and I'd uh, like to just add uh, one more, a couple more uh, important facts for people to be aware of and to keep in the forefront of their minds. And the, the main thing is that the danger of being infected today is much greater than it was back in March when we were forced into the lockdown. And this is simply because there are more infected and contagious people out there. And the other thing that everybody has to keep in mind is that any one of us could be infected because you can be infected and not know it. And in fact, many people infected with this virus are contagious before they have symptoms, that's called pre-symptomatic, or, and some never even have symptoms. And, uh, and currently we of course are not testing people unless they do have symptoms. So there's no way we will know that until, until that happens. And finally, very important is that the virus can be spread by tiny droplets from our lungs when we speak and these droplets stay suspended and are infectious for many minutes. So if you, if you enter a store without a mask and you are speaking and then you leave, someone can come back, can come, come in later and get infected. This is a very important thing for people to be aware of. Just today, I, I learned that some people that I know are likely to have been infected. One is a former graduate student that went down to Columbus and another is a colleague here at the university. So this is starting to reach people that you and I may know. So I, I just want to add that so, and just ask people to be mindful of these things. Thank you. All right. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Okay. The only thing I would like to add is that uh, for the last two months, we've been successful in uh, sort of slowing down the spread of this virus through collective actions. Um, things have been closed down. We haven't been able to make the freedom of choice to go places. And those collective actions have led to a degree of success. As we begin to open things up, uh, it's no longer our collective actions, it's our individual choices. So I would ask that uh, everyone as they go out and interact, that they make good individual choices as those choices will impact our ability to continue hashtag moving forward. Um, so we've had the second and third readings. Okay, could you call the roll? Leontis? Yes. Phipps? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. All right. So resolution 3765 is adopted. Ordinance number 8848 for first reading, ordinance providing supplemental appropriations for the current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, during the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020 and ending December 31, 2020. Mr. President. Mr. Robinette. I move to suspend the rules and give ordinance 8848 at second and third readings. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, could you call the roll? Phipps? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Carol? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Leontis? Yes. Okay, so ordinance 8848 has received its, or has been approved for its second and third readings. Okay, could you go ahead and do that? Ordinance number 8848 for second and third reading, ordinance providing supplemental appropriations for the current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Bowling Green, Ohio, during the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020 and ending December 31, 2020. Mr. President. Mr. Robinette. I move we adopt ordinance 8848. Second. Okay, properly moved and seconded. Okay, could you call the roll? Robinette. Yes. Roland. Yes. Zanfordino. Yes. Harold. Yes. Hollenbaugh. Yes. Leontis. Yes. Phipps. Yes. Okay. Ordinance four four. Oh, excuse me. Eight eight four eight is adopted. 
Resolution number three seven. This this is legislation for second reading. Resolution number three seven six three for second reading. Resolution approving the petitions for renewal and the plan of services to be to be provided by the Bowling Green Central Business Special Improvement District Incorporated. Approving the properties of the municipal corporation in said plan of services and approving the city of Bowling Green's cooperative share cost share. Mr. Mr. President, oh, go ahead. Uh, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Zanfordino. I move that we suspend the rules and give uh, resolution 3763 its uh, third reading. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded. Kay, could you call the roll? Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Leontis? Yes. Phipps? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Okay. Mr. President? No. I have to read it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> resolution number 3763 for third reading. Resolution approving the petitions for renewal and the plan of services to be provided by the Bowling Green Central Business Special Improvement District Incorporated. Approving the properties of the municipal corporation in said plan of services and approving the city of Bowling Green's cooperative cost share. Mr. President. Mr. Zanfordino. I move that we adopt resolution 3763. Second. Okay. okay, properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, could you call the roll? Zanfordino. Yes. Harold. Yes. Hollenbaugh. Yes. Leontis. Yes. Fitt. Yes. Robinette. Yes. Roland. Yes. Okay, resolution 3763 is adopted. Resolution number 3764 for second reading, resolution declaring the necessity to implement the plan of services adopted by the Bowling Green Central Business Special Improvement District Incorporated as approved in resolution number 3763 and declaring the necessity to levy a special assessment for the services set forth in said plan upon the lots and lands benefiting under the plan. Mr. President. Mr. Zanfordino. I move that we give resolution 3764 its third reading. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Kay, could you call the roll? Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Leontis? Yes. Phipps? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Okay. Kay, could you give us our second and third reading on that? Third. Oh, third reading. Resolution number 3764 for third reading. <clears throat> resolution declaring the necessity to impl implement the plan of services adopted by the Bowling Green Central Business Special Improvement District Incorporated as approved in resolution number 3763 and declaring the necessity to levy a special assessment for the services set forth in said plan upon the lots and lands benefiting under the plan. Mr. President. Mr. Zanfordino. I move that we adopt resolution 3764. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, could you call the roll? Hollenbaugh? Yes. Leontis? Yes. Phipps? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Harold? Yes. Okay. Resolution 3764 is adopted. Resolution number 3761 for third reading. Resolution to approve agreements and authorize the municipal administrator to sign the agreements between the City of Bowling Green and Ohio Logistics Limited to provide incentives available for project development in the Bowling Green Community Reinvestment Area number six. Mr. President. Ms. Phipps. Uh, I move to adopt resolution number 3761. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> okay, could you call the roll? Leontis? Leontis? Yes. Phipps? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? <clears throat> yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbach? Yes. Resolution 3761 is adopted. Ordinance number 8846 comes off of the table automatically. Okay. 
Uh, Mr. President. Ms. Phipps. I move to amend ordinance 8846 by substitution. Second. Okay. Properly moved and seconded. Any discussion on that? Okay, could you call the roll? Phipps? Yes. Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanverdino? Yes. Harold? Yes. Hollenbaugh? Yes. Leontis? Yes. All right, so ordinance 8846 has been amended. We need a motion to adopt as amended. Right. Mr. President. Ms. Phipps. Uh, I move to adopt ordinance 8846 as amended. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on this? Uh, Mr. President, I think for the record, uh, the amendment was the change of a language from M1 to M3, correct? Correct. Which I believe was just a typo so, at the beginning. Right. Just so. Yeah, to clarify. Outstanding. Uh, Kay, could you call the roll? Robinette? Yes. Roland? Yes. Zanfordino? Yes. Harold? Yes. Alaba? Yes. Leontis? Yes. Phipps? Yes. All right, <clears throat> ordinance 8846 is amended or is a, a, approved as a, uh, amended. Is there any other business to come before council this evening? Uh, Mr. President, I, I'd like to briefly discuss two items that didn't really neatly fit into our agenda. Uh, one is, uh, as, as you all know, Memorial Day uh, weekend is coming up. Memorial Day is a week from today. And, and as you know, this city usually goes all out uh, to support and honor um, the, the purpose of Memorial Day, which is to honor those who, who died in service to our country. Unfortunately, this year, we won't be having the parade that we normally have. Um, but I would like to encourage everybody to continue to, to pause uh, if they have a chance, visit Oak Grove and note the veterans graves that are marked with small flags. And I'd also like to point out that both Joe Fawcett and I are members of the committee that plan the uh, Memorial Day events. And this year, uh, the veterans groups that normally organize the events will be uh, conducting a brief ceremony at the courthouse, uh, very similar to what we normally do, and conducting a, a program very similar to what we normally do at, at Oak Grove. But it will be done prior to Memorial Day. It will be recorded, at least in, in significant part, and it will be uh, posted online on Memorial Day for, for folks to view. And uh, that's really the best we could do under the circumstances. So I would encourage everyone uh, to uh, participate in that manner. Uh, look for the, uh, I think I think the posting, Joe, you're gonna try to put it up on the city website. And I think the Sentinel Tribune, the, uh, J.D. Pooley has uh, graciously agreed to, to video uh, significant portions of this. And I, I think he's probably gonna post it on the Sentinel website. And then Joe will put a link to it on the city website. But the goal is to do it in advance and, and then just have it available for, for citizens to view on Monday. So, uh, but it is Memorial Day weekend and we're gonna be unfortunately without that uh, tremendous community event, uh, but we're still gonna honor honor the uh, those who have uh, made the ultimate sacrifice. The other thing I would encourage everyone to, uh, to consider when, in, in two weeks on Sunday, uh, May 31st at 2 p.m., um, come out, and line the uh, parade route for the high school seniors of Bowling Green High School. Uh, the parade kicks off from the high school parking lot at 2 p.m. The route's pretty simple. Poe, Askins, Wooster, Maine. Poe back around to the middle school and back into the parking lot. Um, all the school, you know, all the, I guess the school and the school families would uh, ask is that as many folks as can come out and line the route and you know, cheer the uh, cheer the graduates on. So, something to do on Sunday, Sunday, uh, May thirty first at two p.m. And that's all I have. Is there any other business or comments, Mr. President? Mr. Harold, I move that we adjourn. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. And before everybody.